Hey, what's going on guys? Snail Shell is a company that kind of burst onto the scenes making these original design figures here of uh, these female anime characters uh, of varying degrees of uh, complexity. Some of them are, are quite simple. This is one of the more larger sets, and this is actually one of a pair of this sand house pair here. We have Shikura and Saori, and we're gonna be taking a look at both in separate videos. So for today's video, we're just gonna be taking a look at uh, Shikura here, which is the first one, and then the second one in the next video, we'll be taking a look at at Saori here, so definitely stay tuned for that because they both come with some really cool stuff. But for now, let's go ahead and check out the packaging and see everything that we've got inside of here, and then we'll take a look at the figure itself for today's video. Let's get into it. So let's go ahead and get into it here. You'll notice the box art has the image there in gloss and a nice matte finish there for the background. And just to give you guys a nice close up look at that image there on the box. A lot of times this is a photograph of the actual figure, but it's gonna be of like the absolute best quality figure. The figure inside, is it actually up to the same quality? We will see here momentarily, but here on the side of the box, you can see another image there. And on this side of the box, another image here, reminding us this is also 1 12th scale. You'll notice my box unfortunately got a little damaged. That's not a big deal for me anyway. I don't mind too much about that. It's just a box at the end of the day. But there on the top of the box, you can see her main weapons are gonna be these big like heavy gauntlets there, which is pretty cool. And then on the bottom of the box there, you can see the two figures there together. And here on the back side, we got a little bit more details about what all is included. Looks like this is gonna be our three main faceplate options here. And over here you can see just kind of everything that's gonna be included. So we have some like effect stand parts, this flame effect, this ground effect here, the weapons which are kind of on there and then the face plates. So it doesn't necessarily come with a whole lot of different stuff. It's basically just an effect base. Or I guess what I mean, it doesn't necessarily come with a whole lot of different like option parts for the main figure itself, that is anyway. But it does look very cool here, I have gotta say, with that flame effect part. Don't think that there's a way to actually have this like floating like that obviously so you're gonna have to use that together with one of your uh, display bases there I can imagine interestingly as we're cracking this open this is a collaboration with Amiami as well I don't, I'm not sure what part in the production Amiami plays for something like this but Amiami if you guys are unfamiliar it's just like a, a retailer there in Japan a lot of you guys might be familiar with it as a, a secondhand retailer in particular but we've got our basically two trays of stuff and we'll get to that here in just a second I want to just take a look at our printed material real quick first this looks like it is kind of like a character bio here some stats information here about the character we also have a QR code there for some more info. And on the back here, a little advertisement for some other different snail shell characters. So these are other different figures that are available. This is just the illustrations. Well, here we have some photographs of the figures. Maybe these ones up here were still in production at the time, so we just have these uh, illustrations. But I believe all of these do have full photos now that you can see, and some of them already are released now at the time of recording this. This other little small booklet here seems to be our kind of instructions, which is just basically laying out what we should have included here. So you can double check that always to make sure that you have everything. And it looks like maybe the eyes are gonna be movable there, which is pretty cool. And just kind of a little bit about how to utilize all the parts and everything here, as you can see how to uh, make the display stand and everything. All right, and on the back side, it looks like this is gonna be all the same stuff. So it looks to be that it's all Chinese on one side and Japanese on the other side. Kind of unfortunate that it wasn't like Japanese and English uh, or something, but anyway, yeah, Chinese on one side, Japanese on the other. Let's take a look at our contents here, starting off with the lower tray, which is very heavy. In fact, this is going to be our ground display base there, as you can see. All right, and fortunately, it looks like it's all pretty much all kind of assembled there. But as we saw in the manual, it seems like there is going to be some options there for that. And over here, we've got our display arms there, one, two, three, four, five of those. So obviously, it doesn't, it wouldn't immediately appear that you would need five of them. But I think that that's for if you wanted to have like some of these rock bits kind of like actually floating up and not all connected like this. We also have these connection pieces here for the display stands, a straight peg here and this kind of clasp uh, connector there. And on the back of the tray, be sure not to lose this little bit here. This is like the little key piece for moving the eyes that you'll need for the movable eyes. And our top tray here is the good stuff. Starting off, let's take a look here at the flame effect, which does look pretty nice. Very nice quality here with that as it does have like a, a central core piece and then these other pieces which kind of are around that you can see it's like a little bit of a softer plastic for these so you don't necessarily have to worry too much about like accidentally getting this stuck on something and breaking. It does seem like they will have a little bit of give which is nice and that color gradient from the red to orange to yellow on there 
looks pretty nice as well. There's a hard point inside of there where we're going to be plugging this onto an effect base. But that looks pretty cool. You do have a couple more rock bits in here as well. And I'll say these do look nice though, all being just basically in one solid color, they could definitely use with some detail painting on them. So I would say if you guys feel up to the challenge, uh, just take some paint and maybe do some dry brushing and maybe some panel wash just kind of on this and filtering just to give these rocks a little bit more character, a little bit more flavor as they are basically just in one solid color. Got a couple of open hand option parts here for our gauntlet and those are going to be pretty nice those look pretty good in like this dark gunmetal color there is an additional key piece there for the eyes so you will have an extra one of those which is nice i would just go ahead and leave the one that was taped to the back leave that there in the bag as just one just in case you lose this one taking a nice close-up look here at a couple of our option faces here so this is the kind of upset face the printing on it looks really nice and you'll see there is even some shading on there also so the quality of this does look really really good i'll have to say and then this face is going to be the one that has the movable eyes so if you look here on the back you can see where you're going to use that key piece to move the eyes if you wanted to have those off to one direction or not i'm not normally a fan of these because they can end up looking kind of a little bit odd but if you manipulate them properly they can look pretty cool and give you a wider range of expressions of course and then the main figure itself last but not least you can see we have a number of layers of this uh, protective plastic kind of between the parts here just to keep everything protected all right and removing that here is our figure now a couple of immediate reactions number one it, it is a little bit smaller than i was expecting now, now it is 112 scale, so you know, obviously, having built a lot of 112 scale model kits from the Sosai Shoujo Taian line, for example, to the Megami device kits, were not, which are not technically 112 scale, but they are essentially 112 scale. That does basically fit in line with those. And just for a comparison, here is a 112 scale Sosai Shoujo Taian kit. Uh, for a size comparison and yeah it does look pretty much exactly on point in terms of size obviously there's some differences in scaling the head size the leg thickness certainly is going to be a big difference there in terms of the proportions the other immediate thought that i have is that it does feel a little bit loose here in particular in the hips which could be a problem if you want to have this standing up i mean obviously we're going to have a lot of weight here at the top not only in the body but in the kind of gauntlet parts, her accessories here, the weapons that she has on her hands are gonna be pretty heavy. So you're gonna want those hips to probably be pretty uh, strong to be able to hold up the weight and not be floppy. But on the other hand, of course, we do have that hard point there in her back that you could utilize or this clasp uh, that you could utilize here to just use the display base and then you just don't really need to worry about it. But zooming in, there's a couple other things I will point out. Number one, the painting on it does look really, really, really nice. Very accurate. I'm not noticing any kind of overspray anywhere. The painting on it looks quite sharp. The details on it look good. You'll notice these string bits are kind of just meant to be, I think they're meant to be hanging loose. This one's got like a little bit bent up like that. You could straighten that out with just uh, dipping this in some hot water or something like that, or even with a hair dryer, with just heating it up and then just kind of straightening out would probably do the trick. And the same thing up here with the little horns on the top of the head, they got a little bit warped off to the side there. You could straighten those out, I think. The other thing that I forgot was a feature with these figures, and I believe this is the same for both of them too, is that the chest part, the skin tone, part of the chest is actually in a softer kind of like squishy plastic so it gives you a bit more I guess uh, realistic feel to it somewhat but that's definitely not the case with all the other skin tone parts like here on the legs for example the arms a little bit of skin tone that you have on there the face parts the only part that's kind of has that squishy rubbery feel to it is just the parts there for the chest as for the clothing though too the uh, jacket part here is in a softer material and the skirt part is also in a softer material so those will move and those will not uh, hinder your articulation basically by the fact that those are soft parts that are will be able to flex and move. Same thing with the hair to a degree. It is softer, but it's really only gonna be flexible here towards the ends where it gets thinner at the top. Obviously, I mean, it's just kind of one big chunk there. It's not really too much that you can do with that. And for the gauntlet over here on this side, I will say that shiny gold looks really, really nice on there. It does look really quite cool. And then going down here, have to appreciate the footwear too, because these also look pretty nice. The painting on those looks really good and then up underneath the feet you have some nice detail there as well it's not having any painting there which is unfortunate it could have looked cool if that had like some orange soles in the bottom of the feet i think would have looked interesting but you could definitely paint that if you wanted to that's the thing with these two is that if you wanted to add more paint in different areas or repaint certain uh, parts in a different color you can do that or add decals or something like that i think could also look pretty cool 
add some decals around on some of the parts on this I think would be very interesting. And then just take a closer look to uh, here at the base before we try out some poses with this. So this is made up of a bunch of different sections that you can break up and the manual does show you how to put it back together again, which is convenient. But again, like I said, it's all in one color basically, even though it does kind of look like the color is slightly different between this inner circle and the outer circle. But on the bottom side, yeah, every piece does have a hard point. So if you did want to have this, like I said, uh, with some of these rocks kind of up and you wanted to make it look like they were kind of floating around the character, you can absolutely do that by just having them on their own display bases. And you'll notice that this piece in particular that I picked up is the one that does have the hard point for plugging the display base onto the top of the, this uh, rock formation here. But if you take a look around here, as I exposed this part of like kind of the inner circle, there's a hard point right here that you could have your base. So again, like if you just had the inner circle part you can have the base and the character connected onto there and have these outer parts kind of up and floating around here something like that so let's go ahead and try that out with some posing here and one more thing that I didn't mention about the open hands is that the fingers are actually completely articulated so you do have some nice options there as far as articulating the fingers on those open hands uh, no holding hands or anything if you wanted to hold an accessory you don't get anything in this that you would hold but if you wanted to give it an accessory from a different figure or something like that you don't have the option to do that really with this with the hand options that we have available and so checking out some poses here let me share some of my thoughts the art articulation is limited in a couple of key areas in particular in the elbows I wish that they would have designed the elbow joints in a little bit different way that would give us a little bit better range and those gauntlet parts are particularly large so they're just basically just going to be getting in the way but I think they could have designed those where the joint is like somewhat integrated into the gauntlet parts and there would be like a moving part that's like a part of those that would allow for a little bit further elbow range in particular if you wanted to do like a elbow back like an elbow cocked back kind of pose or something like that you are going to be a little bit limited in those uh, in some poses another limitation comes from my concern earlier about kind of the weakness in the legs in particular around the hip joints that definitely is going to be an issue and you are going to have to use the stand in order to do most posing with this you probably could get it to stand on its own but it's going to be quite uh, unbalanced and just for the sake of making sure this is not going to fall over you're going to want to use the stand with this and that leads me to probably my, my biggest complaint about this is the stand itself so the rock base and the, ex the arms that you have for this are nice on their own but you don't really have a good enough connection for kind of connecting everything together I feel like this also needed to include some or some other sort of just like a basic base some just like a hexagonal think of like a Bendai action base or a Kotobuki of flying display base something like that that would give you the option to plug one or multiple of those display arms onto some sort of base because now if you wanted to have the rocks like flying or floating as I was mentioning before you don't really have anything to plug those effect arms into in order to do that so you kind of are left with not really having as much options as it would immediately seem by the fact that you don't have like a central display base or some sort of additional just like basic display base to plug some of those arms into and that's also true for the flame effect part in a couple of these poses where you're seeing the flame effect part and I have that plugged onto an effect arm and the effect arm is just basically just kind of wedged into a small gap between the rocks there's not really an actual proper place for you to be able to plug that into so when all those pieces of rock are all connected you actually only have one point where you can plug an effect arm onto and you're going to need that for the main character and that leaves you with not a place to plug in a uh, display arm there for the flame effect as well so the base uh, does leave a little bit to be desired and I do wish that the figure was a little bit more solid overall but it does look really nice I think you're going to have the best poses honestly and if you probably just kind of avoid the more dynamic poses and just stick to sort of like so a little bit more basic poses because the figure itself looks really nice I think the painting on it the colors the, the, the design overall is what drew me to this one I think it is a really great looking figure and also the movable eyes are really quite nice too to be able to move those I wasn't sure if those are gonna really look good or not but they actually do look good and they do allow you some more range of expressions without having to worry about like using decals for the eyes you can just adjust the direction of the eyes manually and that does give you some nice options for posing so a great looking figure overall with some pros and cons but let me know your guys thoughts down in the comment section below and if you, any of you guys have checked out any of the more recent releases in the line have any of the issues that I've brought up been uh, addressed in more recent figures let me know if you guys would like to see more releases in this line reviewed by me in the future let me know in the comments as well and of course if you guys want to check out some of these figures for yourself you can check the link in the video description to USA Gundam store aside from these of course we have all sorts of other figma and model kits and everything else there on the website so definitely check that out guys thank you so much for checking out the video here today leaving a like making sure that you're subscribed really appreciate all your guys support thank you so much until next time hope you all have a great day i'll see you guys later bye bye